Alrighty, ho there my lovies. Welcome back to Crazy But Not Dangerous. I'm Shorty Vaughn. Welcome to my kitchen here in Glendale, Arizona. And I'm four foot five, doing the best I can with what I've got. Got a little sinus congestion today, but we're gonna keep on going because nothing's gonna stop us from having a good dinner. Yay, hooray. What are we making today? Well, we are going to be making, you know, everybody's favorite comfort food. Yeah, for centuries, for for darn near eons, everybody's favorite comfort food, the humble meatloaf. Absolutely. So I've just got my food processor lid here. And to that, I'm going to start off with one cup of some old-fashioned oats. So I've got a one-third cup measure because that's the one that fits in here. And so I'm going to add three of these, which is going to be one cup of old-fashioned oats. You could use crackers. You could use cornflakes, oatmeal, um, bread. If you have a bunch of bread and it's just not doing much of anything, yeah, yeah. You could, any kind of grain product, you could add cornmeal. Anything that you're going to use as a binder. And then also, it has the added benefit of kind of soaking up some of that grease that is released from your ground beef, pork, what have you. If you're using turkey, more power to you. Chicken also, ground chicken also makes a decent meatloaf. So I've got one cup of my rolled oats in here. I'm also going to be adding an onion. I know, no big shocker there, huh, baby? I'm just going to quarter these up, throw those right into my food processor. Now, if you don't have a food processor, just give them a dice. That's fine. No big deal. No special equipment needed for the humble meatloaf. Now, my mother made meatloaf. She made it, um, you know, once or twice a month, generally. My mother had about 30, 35 recipes in her repertoire and meatloaf. Yes, please, and thank you. Why? Because back then, you know, when I was growing up, like ground beef, that was one of the least expensive meats that we could buy that was that was on the menu because it was cheap also um chicken back then was also very inexpensive and those were our two primary proteins chicken and ground beef and a lot of people use ground beef now because it is very versatile but it is sometimes quite pricey i've also got about one half of a yellow bell pepper in there and I'm also going to put one half of a green bell pepper in there. Any color will work, whatever's your favorite color. I personally think that they all taste great. I'm gonna make sure we don't have any seeds in there though because you know, I don't think those are so spectacular. So yeah, my mom, she would make meatloaf and she would make one that was probably about 10 to 12 pounds um, to feed all of us. Yeah, she was, a, she was a strong lady. You had to be strong to be able to get all that in and out of the oven all the time. Bless her. Bless her. I also have some of our dried mushrooms. And dried mushrooms are great in the meatloaf because there's moisture in there from the meat and it will help rehydrate these, but these will also act as a binder. So if you didn't want to add the oats, yeah, you could just add the mushrooms. And I'm going to put these into the food processor because I do want them to be quite small. Fresh mushrooms would work just as well, be equally delicious. All right, so I've got this little bit smells good oh it smells real good got this little bit of stuff i'm gonna go ahead take it over to my food processor give it a zip 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 then we're gonna come back and do all of our assembly 
We're not done yet. All right, got it all blended up together. Smells fantastic. I'm gonna go ahead and put it right into my big mixing bowl here. And I have very thoroughly washed my hands because um, for me, mixing the meatloaf is something that you just have to do with your hands. Now, if you're squeamish about touching raw meat, you know, baby, get yourself some gloves or a really sturdy spoon. But yeah, it's just something that I think you have to do with your hands. But each to their own. I also have two pounds here of meatloaf mix. And this was, um, this is 50% ground pork and 50% beef. Yay, hooray. I'm going to go ahead and add that right on in. There we go. Get that all smushed down there. Now, I've been following that for the last couple of days because I did a little bit of meal planning and took it out. I shot my freezer and was looking at me. Yeah, a meatloaf. Choose me. You know you love meatloaf. It wasn't wrong. All right. So we've got a good start there. We've got our oats. We've got some onions. We've got some bell peppers. We've got all the things. Let's go ahead and I am gonna put um, some tomato powder. I'll link the video right up here on how to make tomato powder. But it is very similar to the, um, uh, the green powder except with tomatoes. I'm going to put two teaspoons of tomato powder in there. Yes, please, and thank you. I also have a little bit of mirepoix powder. What's mirepoix? Carrot, celery, and onion. And I just dehydrate them and then give them a good zippity zip over in the food processor. Makes a delicious powder. Maybe we'll make some soon. And I'm going to put about three teaspoons of that in there that's completely optional um if i didn't do that i might go ahead and just finally chop up a little bit of carrot celery and add that because we already have some onion powder already in there so i might just go ahead and add a little bit of carrot and celery right to my meatloaf i'm just cheating today because i'm hungry and, and lazy. Have a little bit of granulated garlic. Hello, Gilroy. And I like a lot of garlic, so I'm gonna add one, two whopping teaspoons full of that granulated garlic. For giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and add some green powder. You know, just for a little added nutrition. All of these things are optional. You can put all kinds, two teaspoons, all kinds of things in your meatloaf. So I was reading this article about meatloafs and they can document the meatloaf going all the way back to the fifth century as a Mediterranean dish. And basically it was a collaboration of meat scraps that they just chopped all together. So you've got your chopped meat and fruit and nuts and um, like a cornmeal kind of product combined all together, shaped like a loaf, and baked next to the bread all the way back to the fifth century. So you make the rules about what goes into your meatloaf. I think that this is going to be spectacular. I've got a little bit of spike, no salt seasoning, just, just for, you know, giggles, just for kicks. Going to put about a teaspoon of that in there, more or less. Because, you know, we're watching the salt. Add some parsley flakes. And just some of that. So yeah, for a meatloaf, you can just go over to your fridge. Open it up. You've got some ground meat. Maybe you've got ground turkey, ground chicken, ground pork, whatever. You've got some spices. You've got some veg. Throw it all together. You need a binder, you need some kind of a protein, 
you need some veg, the aromatics, um, a little bit of milk, and a couple of eggs. Other than that, the world is your oyster, baby. You could put oysters in. I've never tried it, but you know, that might appeal to you. Also, I'm going to add about one third cup of no sugar added Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Now, I usually put this on the top, you know, instead of ketchup because we prefer the barbecue sauce. But Andrew asked me today to put bacon on top of our meatloaf. And that's not something that I usually do, but you know, I like to indulge him. He's worth it. I'm going to add about two thirds cup of milk. And that will just help your meatloaf be extra tender and delicious. Hey, hooray. If you don't have milk, well, you know, maybe I would add just a little bit of olive oil. You know, maybe two, two tablespoons of olive oil. That would be just fine too. Especially if I was using a ground chicken or a ground turkey because they're so lean. I might go ahead and add those two tablespoons of olive oil and the milk too if I was using the ground turkey or the ground chicken because yeah those can be pretty lean. Also kind of go ahead and add some egg and one, two, and There we go. Now with my impeccably clean hands, I'm gonna go ahead and just start working this together. And it's cold, I'll tell you that. It's cold here today too. Our high today was only like 55 degrees and um, it's chilly. It's chilly here in the house. I'm excited to get the oven turned on to warm everything up because I don't run my heat. No, I think that's just a waste. It's chilly, but it's not chilly enough. You're cold here in the house. You know, put on a sweater. You'll be all right. Even better, do some chores. That'll warm you up. And if you don't have an idea of what to do, just ask me, babies. Yeah, I'll be glad to tell any of the people that live here what chores need to be done. Something up high. All right, so yeah, the humble meatloaf can be traced back all the way to the 5th century. I'm guessing that, you know, women with a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, we're making uh, a meatloaf-like product. Well, you know, since we, since fire. Yeah, since you've got some of this, some of that, what have you, might as well just make it into a meatloaf. I'm getting this all stirred together, getting it, because I want the deliciousness all the way through. Yes, please, and thank you. Delicious. Now, I've used a combination of beef and pork because um, that's what was on sale. I had a little bit of beef left over not quite enough to do anything with and then I had some pork chops you know that looked like a serial killer had cut them so I took them off the bone put them in my food processor to make ground pork and then that's going to make a good meatloaf yep absolutely if your meatloaf feels too wet you know you can add some more of the oats if your meatloaf feels too dry, well, maybe you need to add a little bit more milk to it and it should just come together and kind of form a loaf-like substance while it's still in the pan. Yeah, if it, if it feels sloppy, just add some more oats to it. But this looks good and that, yeah, Formed its loaf already. I got one clean hand, one dirty hand. Got a little, um, this is a weird shape. This is a weird size. It is 
um, an eight and a half by 11 uh, baking dish. It came from my mother-in-law's house. And basically at this point, I can just go ahead and roll my meatloaf right on in here and it is loaf shaped. Now if you want to, if you have a loaf pan and you want to put it into a loaf pan, you go right on ahead. But I'm making a big meatloaf because I want plenty of leftovers. Yes, please and thank you. And so I want to kind of square mine up. And we love the next day, the meatloaf sandwich. Mm-hmm, yep, with a slice of cheddar. That's delicious. I'm gonna have a meatloaf wrap, you know, cause I'm trying to stay off the bread. But yeah, that's gonna be good too. I could just have a piece of meatloaf with some cheddar cheese melted on top and just use my imagination. Just think about all of that um, delicious bread all those carbs that I'm missing out on, but it would still be a delicious, that would be a delicious lunch. I wouldn't be mad at that one bit. I've got four pieces of bacon. This was left over. I cooked a pound of bacon the other day. Um, we had some for breakfast and then we're saving some for t maybe tomorrow or Friday's breakfast. But um, there we go. Got that all co covered. Just that extra little bit of decadence. It's going to be fantastic. We're going to whoop it up. All right, before I go ahead and touch my oven, I'm going to wash up my porky beefy fingers, get all sanitized, get some of my mess cleaned up. I'm going to get this into a 375 degree oven. It's going to cook for about an hour. Okay, let's get this baby in. Yay, hooray. I think that just looks fantastic. I'm pleased as punch. So yeah, you make the rules. You know what you like, you know what your family likes, and you know what you've got in your refrigerator. You could come up with some kind of a meatloaf. So I was thinking about that 5th century meatloaf with the meat and the nuts and the fruit. And I was thinking, how delicious would a turkey meatloaf be that you cram jammed full of, you know, maybe like some shredded butternut squash, some cranberries, some walnuts, some rosemary, thyme, and sage, a little bit of the olive oil. Yeah, some oats or, or even some breadcrumbs. Yeah, that you just cram jammed full of deliciousness, served that with a nice turkey gravy. I think that that could be very economical because I know Walmart and Aldi both have a ground turkey that is very, very inexpensive. And yeah, that could be an excellent budget meal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still having those holiday feels. I'm still having, yeah, that, that gives me more of them. I don't think it's too late. It's still winter. Can we say those are all winter feels, not holiday feels? Ooh. There's always next week. Yay, hooray. So this is the schmaltz that we made the other day. The rendered chicken fat. It smells fantastic. It smells like deep, rich chicken flavor. Yay, hooray. And that is going to be the perfect fat for oven roasting my yellow potatoes. It's in there pretty solid. So I want to go ahead and just um, microwave about three tablespoons of this delicious schmaltz for my potatoes. You could use bacon fat. You can use olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, maybe whatever kind of fat you've got going on in your house. But we're going to be using the schmaltz over here because that's just... That's all comfort food. And you know, this week has seemed really hard for some reason, and it's not just me. All my friends kind of feeling the same way. 
I don't know if it's the post holiday blues. I don't know if it's because the weather has been so lousy. I'm not quite sure what's going on. But yeah, been a little bit down in the dumps. And some comfort food is just the ticket. Gonna make us feel all better. So I am only gonna nuke this up in my microwave for about 30 seconds. It's probably not even gonna need all of that. But yeah, it's, it stays nice and solid in your refrigerator. And oh, the smells. It's got them all, baby. That did not even take 15 seconds. Yay, great. So I have already washed my um, yellow potatoes. And I like these yellow potatoes um, because I have found for me that they do not spike my blood sugar the way a russet would. So for my small ones, I'm just going to cut them in half. For my larger ones, I'm going to cut them into quarters or a little bit more. You know, they're going to shrink down a little bit when they cook, but um, I, I just want them all to be a similar size so that they roast evenly. So I'm all behind that. Yay, hooray. Did you do anything exciting today? Did you see anything good? Um, what happened over here? Dishes, laundry, trash. I mowed the front yard. Um, talked to a neighbor for a minute. And talked on the phone to my poor friend. She and her husband have both had, you know, uh, corona. They've had the corona. Anyhow, they're not feeling great. But they're making it. Anyhow, I wanted to cheer them up. <clears throat> and uh, hopefully she's feeling better. He's back to work tomorrow. So she's a few days behind him. And yeah, they're just having a rough time. See, I've got an ugly spot. I hate that. But I'm just going to peel it off and use it anyhow. The rest of it looks fine. You get an ugly spot, just peel around it. It'll be all right. And I am putting my potatoes in this bowl because I want to season them. I want them all really good and coated and delicious. Yay, hooray. There we go. All right. And those were a bargain. I got that whole three pound bag of yellow potatoes over at my 99 cents only store for 99 cents. It was one of the few things in the store that was actually 99 cents. You know how that goes. Anyhow, I'm going to throw this three tablespoons of schmaltz right over top of those potatoes. Yes, please, and thank you. You could put onion in here. You could put bell pepper in here. You know, some squash or some zucchini or something like that. Yes, please, and thank you. I am going to go ahead and start off with giving this plenty of black pepper. Yep. Because I do want these pretty heavily seasoned. That's how we enjoy them. And I'm going to give it a little bit of salt. I know, just a little bit. I have my Spike No Salt All Purpose Seasoning. Yay, hooray. And I am just going to liberally. Yep. I might even come back for more. We'll just set it off to the side over here. I'm not sponsored by Spike, but I love them. And, you know, I use this like I would Lowry's. Hey, Spike, if you're listening, baby. Yeah. I could use a sponsor. I also have some parsley flakes. Because I think everything's better with a little bit of parsley. Why not? Won't hurt a bit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and toss this all together, making sure that they're all covered and delicious, that each little potato bite has got plenty of seasoning, that they're all felt welcome and invited to the party, because it's going to be a party. Party in my belly. Get on in there. Oh, yeah. Smells good. I get so hungry when I make dinner. I'm starving to death. Yeah, it's terrible. The smells, they get me. I was making that that vegetable stock, and I was in the bed, 
and it just kept wafting. And I, oh, and poor Pigs, he's laying in the bed with me. He's like, mm-hmm. And we're both thinking, yeah, we need a midnight snack. I'm trying not to eat, you know, after dinner. But that's it. No more snacking. Piggy doesn't like it one bit. He's looking at me at midnight like, are, are we going to have something? Are we going to have a yum yum? Like, nope, we're just getting out of bed. We're just having, a, you know, a rest stop. Then we're going right back to bed. So I'll see you at 4 a.m., little dude. And that's when, yeah, that's when breakfast is for him and I. We have breakfast at 4 a.m. That's my quiet time because everybody else in the house is sleeping except for me and the pig boy. And we have our, we have our quiet time. We watch YouTube. We drink coffee. We have breakfast. All right, so there we go. If you had more people or you weren't on a low carb journey, baby, I would cut some more potatoes up because these are gonna be sensational. But this is gonna be enough for us, just enough. Just a little bit, yeah, completely satisfying. Now, a lot of people say if you put the potatoes or whatever you're roasting face down that you will get a great crispy crunch and that's probably true so I'm gonna go ahead and do it um, I've got my oven preheated already to 375 degrees because that's how I'm cooking my meatloaf um, I don't think that these potatoes are gonna take the full hour that the meatloaf will um, so I'm gonna wait about 15 minutes and then I'm going to pop those potatoes in because I'm thinking those are only going to take a half hour to the one hour I'm cooking the meatloaf. But I'm keeping my eagle eye on the meatloaf because I don't want my bacon to burn. And if it looks like it's getting too brown, I'm going to give it a little beach blanket bingo with a little bit of that aluminum foil to keep my bacon from burning. I want everything to be done. I want it to reach an internal temperature of 165. That's where it's going to be the safest. But I want that bacon to be completely cooked and delicious on the outside, but not burned. So I'm going to give these about 15 minutes, just pacing my dinner. I'm just pacing my dinner. And what else are we going to cook with it? I'm going to open a can of green beans. No salt added green beans. Yep, absolutely. That's going to be our veg. We're also going to have some cucumber slices because I have an English cucumber in there that's going to go wonky. All right, I got schmaltzy garlicky oniony fingers i gotta go wash up again baby all right it's magic time babies i'm gonna put you in the oven i need to rotate my meatloaf so i have room for both of them oh yeah that meatloaf is smelling good Be great And about 30 minutes for each one of these. Probably all I'm going to need and they're going to be delicious. I'm going to go ahead and um, get uh, my green beans going. And they're just no salt green beans in a can. I'm just going to pour those off into a little dish. And uh, add a little bit of pepper to them. Pop them in the microwave for, you know, about three to five minutes right before we eat. No sweat. Gotta have a little veg on the side. Gotta get your veg in, babies. So in this article, I was reading about meatloaf. In the 1940s, there was actually something called a vitality loaf. And it was part ground beef, part um, ground pork, and also ground liver. And you combined that with your binder, a couple of eggs, some spinach. Yeah, yeah. And for good measure, you could throw in a couple of tablespoons of cod liver oil. Yeah, oh boy, that sounds vitality. Yes, please, and thank you. Sounds horrible. My mother-in-law, Andrew's mom, used to make this meatloaf extravaganza. It was enormous. 
which is surprising because it was only the three of them, you know, and her beloved only child. Good for him. Anyhow, she would have ground beef and then the binders and um, onion and bell pepper in there and then also olives. And then she would take hard boiled eggs and set them horizontally in the middle of the meatloaf. So when you sliced it, you also got a big chunk of the hard boiled egg, the white and the yellow and, white, and ketchup all over the top. Um, her meatloaf was spectacular. Oh, it had cheese in it too. Yeah, so it had, it had the hard boiled egg and the cheese. It was really good meatloaf and, and I never make it like that. I don't know why. Maybe next time. Ooh, I got my dishes all cleaned up. They're over there drying. I might even have a few minutes to put them away before dinner. Yay, hooray. Can't beat that with a stick. Andrew just came over and asked me, Hey, do you think you could make a meatloaf omelet? Well, I guess. I've never really thought about it before. Yeah, can you make meatloaf omelets tomorrow for breakfast? I don't, I don't know, maybe. Anyhow, so I got to thinking about it. I'm like, well, if you heated the meatloaf up on the side and then, you know, you made your regular, like, cheese omelet, you could probably put the meatloaf slice in before you flip it out. That would probably work. Anyhow, I guess it's meatloaf omelets tomorrow for breakfast. The things that I will do for this man. He's worth it. He's worth it. Classic TV trivia time. Yay, hooray. So, Mama's Family. Anybody remember Mama's Family? It was a skit that actually debuted on the Carol Burnett show and then spun off into its own, you know, sitcom. And I love Carol Burnett. And as much as I love Carol Burnett, I also love Vicki Lawrence. I think she was just a hoot and a holler. Yay, hooray. I love Mama's Family. Makes me laugh a lot. Anyhow, Vicki Lawrence, a young woman, plays a very older, grandmotherly kind of figure. She lives in a house with her son, her daughter-in-law, and then um, Bubba. And I think Bubba might have been a grandson. Pretty sure on that. Not exactly sure. Can't really remember where Bubba came in. Anyhow, her son and her daughter-in-law lived in the basement. Does anybody remember what the names are? Anyhow, um, the daughter-in-law always wore like hot pants and off the shoulder blouses, had big blonde hair, wore high, high heels all the time, worked down at the grocery store, and then, you know, her son, yeah, they lived down in the basement. They were multi-generational, just like we are now. It's, yeah, it, it, all, it all comes full circle. What were their names? What were the names of the son and the daughter-in-law down in the basement? Let me know down below if you remember. Yay for Mama's family. We have about five more minutes of cook time and I want to check the temperature. Right in the middle. And then I also want to add a little bit of glaze on top. So I'm taking some more of the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. And I am going to pour that on top. Just a little bit. Just a touch. And then I am going to just brush this right over that meatloaf. The barbecue sauce will be so fantastic. Ketchup will work too. That's more traditional. Whatever rocks your boat, pour that right on over. Get that all glazed up for that extra little bit of delicious yum yum. Yes, please, and thank you. Hot diggity around the sides. There we go. What do we add? 
we are at 155. So it might be more like 10 minutes. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn the broiler on so that this uh, bacon can render just a little bit more. Yeah, if your bacon isn't as brown as you would want it, go ahead, turn that broiler on. It's going to work just fine. Get that, keep your eagle eye on it though because you don't want it to, you don't want it to burn all to death. Let's take a look at my potatoes while we're at it. Ooh, they're good and soft, crispy on the bottom. Oh, look at that. That looks good. Oh, yes, please, and thank Yeah, delicious and crispy and brown on the bottom. Soft and tender all around. I'm not mad at those one bit. I'm going to go ahead and put these under the broiler again for a second. You know, maybe we'll crisp up the top just a little bit. I'm going to keep my eco light on because my oven is so old that um, if I don't leave the oven partially cracked, then the broiler will turn itself off. Yeah, so I just got to leave it cracked a little bit, but that helps me keep an eagle eye on it so I don't burn up dinner because you know what? We're going to eat it even if I do. Yeah, it'll be all right. Won't be the best, but we'll still eat it. I'm going to go ahead and get the plates ready and get the trays all ready, get Jeopardy all queued up. All right, so we got Andrew a delicious slice of meatloaf. Let's go ahead and get him plenty of green beans. Yay, hooray. And I just seasoned those very simply with just a little bit of butter and a little bit of the um, black cracked pepper. Yay, hooray. And then let's go ahead and get him some oven roasted potatoes with that delicious schmaltz. Yippee skippy. All right. I think that that looks fantastic. Yay for dinner. I'm super hungry. Smells fantastic. All right, my lovies, be good, be careful. Look both ways. He's gonna love that little bacon and that little barbecue sauce on top. Yippee skippy. See you next time. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. Be good, be careful, and look both ways.